My guest today is Christine Fringer, founder of Symbiosis, a learning center for middle school and high school age homeschoolers that's located just outside of Boston that Christine launched in 2019. She currently serves 20 students with both full-time and part-time enrollment options. And I had the chance to visit with Christine and see her beautiful new space uh, twice over the past couple of months and just really thrilled with what um, Christine is building and bringing to the larger community in greater Boston. So Christine Fringer, welcome to the Liberated Podcast. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I'm so glad to have you here, and I'd love to start with your background and experience in higher ed, because I think you have a unique perspective, one that I haven't um, heard that much, you know, sort of compared to other education entrepreneurs I've interviewed on the podcast, many of whom come into entrepreneurship from sort of the K to 12 level, either as educators or people working in schools or parents of K to 12 students for you. It was really your observations and being in higher ed for a while that led you to come up with the idea for symbiosis. So I wonder if you can share a little bit about your experience, um, again, in higher ed. Sure, sure. Um, So I worked at a small private college for about 18 years, and I worked, I was director of um, a support program for students who, you know, had a lot of support in high school and We're looking for um, help transitioning to college and understanding and navigating the college landscape and um, needing help with executive functioning and um, accessing the resources they needed, study strategies. Uh, Many of them had accommodations. I was also for a short period director of the accessibility office. So a lot of students who had documentation um, of learning differences, um, you know, I helped them create 504 plans. And um, and so when I was there, you know, I saw, uh, I worked with a lot of students who didn't, I, I felt like they didn't have the skills really to, or the confidence um, to be successful in college and needed a lot of help. And so that the college I worked at closed down and I kept working with the, with a lot of students trans, transferring to other colleges. And, um, and I felt like if I could create a school that was more supportive of these, of this student who, you know, kind of fell through the cracks in high school, didn't get the right support. Um, What kind of, what would that look like? And so (laughs) I, you know, that's kind of where, where I started with the idea of a school that was more tailored to these students. um, That wasn't a one size fits all kind of school, but that was more tailored to, you know, students who had learning differences, who had anxiety, ADHD, um, were on the spectrum. And so that's kind of where, where I started with the idea. And so I did it. <laughs> you, <laughs> you did. It, it's so great. Yeah. It, again, you opened in 2019. What was, I guess, what were the steps that you took from the idea or this inkling that, you know, you maybe could create some kind of program for tweens and teens um, that would provide that individualized learning experience to then launching? I mean, I guess, how did you think about alternative education models? What was your inspiration, Um, you know, again, from idea stage to action? Yeah, I, you know, I worked with students, with some um, homeschoolers at the college who needed help um, with admissions. I worked with admissions, helping these students create a transcript um, because they didn't really have a formal high school transcript. So that gave me a lot of um, experience sort of um, looking into what home, because I didn't really have a lot of experience with homeschoolers. I didn't really know that much about homeschooling. And so I learned a lot with the admissions office and um, and then I just kind of, you know, that's a good question. What did I do? I, um, I had one student my first, my, that first semester of the fall of 2019, I connected with a mom whose son was really struggling in school and 
he was uh, taking a dual enrollment class at uh, Mass Bay Community College and she wanted me to help him with that class. Um, but he didn't have a high school transcript. He just needed, he, I think he needed, you know, a math class. He needed, you know, and I went, I Googled, you know, a lot in those days and looked up, you know, what are the Massachusetts requirements for a high school diploma? And I took his transcript that he had, he, he was at the Walpole High School and, um, and I filled in the, the, the blanks, you know, I filled in those holes, like he needed a history class, he needed a social science, he needed math. And um, <clears throat> so I uh, connected with LaSalle University for interns and they came, people who were, students who were studying education, students who were studying, um, who were getting their degree in psychology, and they came and worked with me that first year, helping teach him teach those classes. He went online. We found some online classes, um, and that's kind of how I just slowly. And then I hired some teachers to help me with um, science and math and history and Dungeons and Dragons um, and art and drama. Um, and a, a few moms that I met that were looking for alternative schools uh, who had a lot of experience homeschooling their kids, they came and helped me with the program and develop the classes and teach the classes. And it was kind of just all over the place, <laughs> if that makes sense. Yeah. And did you know that you wanted to open Symbiosis as a learning center for homeschoolers? Had you considered opening as a recognized private school? I mean, you operate as um, basically a full-time schooling alternative for families that want that at uh, that's less expensive than traditional private schools in the area, but you are serving students who are registered homeschoolers in the state of Massachusetts. So I'm wondering where that kind of model or structure came from for you. Yeah. So I knew, you know, I, I, I wasn't, I'm not an accredited school. So I um, realized that students, a lot, not just homeschoolers, students who were in public school or were in other schools, but withdrew from their school for a variety of reasons. They just weren't being successful. They were struggling. They were refusing to go to school. Uh, <clears throat> so I helped those families um, connect with their district to say they were withdrawing their child from the school system, that they were gonna be homeschooling. That's kind of what that looks like, you know, helping them withdraw from their school. I, so initially I didn't really have homeschoolers per se. They, they became homeschoolers right. once I to my school. Yeah, and how has that changed now that you're up to about 20 students uh, from just one in the fall of 2019? So amazing growth. Is it still primarily students who have been in a traditional uh, schooling environment and it wasn't working for a variety of reasons? Or are you finding folks are just gravitating towards more of this individualized learning model um, without some sort of negative trigger? You know, I, I think now that word has spread in the homeschooling community, I am getting more homeschoolers now. Um, who are looking to supplement what they're doing at home, or <clears throat> many of them, um, their, their children are growing up and not wa wanting more socialization, more structure in school, and, um, and parents are kind of struggling teaching <laughs> their kids at that age. So I think now, you know, I'm, I'm getting more homeschoolers who hear about me from other homeschoolers. And then I have a feeder school now that there's a, a K through five program at the location I'm at. Um, and they're all homeschoolers and they all know homeschoolers. And so they, um, you know, they, that's a K through five. So they come to me when they're, when they're done. So this year I have a lot of students who graduated from their program. Yeah, that's so great. I mean, you have this amazing new space this year that, as you said, um, you have this feeder program of, of elementary school age, homeschoolers, um, lots of outside space, wilderness trails, uh, just a bright and beautiful building that you're able to uh, use nearly exclusively, it seems, yeah. for the academic yeah. year. Yeah. Um, 
And so what does a, a typical week look like then for your students and how are the academics mixed in with enrichment mm -hmm. activities and so on? Yeah, so we are open Monday through Thursday and you know every day is a, is a different schedule. We have academics in the morning, um, but we have a, it's sort of a very relaxed and peaceful environment. You know, students feel very, uh, welcome and nurtured. It's a very mindful teaching model. Um, <clears throat> you know, we have breaks between classes where students can go outside or um, draw or, you know, connect with other students. There's a lot of sort of free time, play time. <laughs> um, and then in the afternoons, you know, we have uh, Dungeons and Dragons, which is a big, uh, a big deal at symbiosis <laughs> a lot of students just love love doing that um and then we have um nature journaling we have drama and art and then you know we provide you know academic reports throughout the year we give to families who submit those to their school district for for approval for that for that year um and as homeschoolers, I should just clarify that in Massachusetts, homeschoolers um, report to their district, their school district, not to the state. So that's something that's maybe slightly unusual for Massachusetts. So that's where they get uh, annual approval. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so it's, you know, we have a big space, you know, a lot of the students that so that ages range between 10 and 18. And <clears throat> many of the classes they take together as a, as a group, uh, like the art class, and um, we have a geography of food class, they take that together and the drama. Um, and then for the math classes, you know, there's a lot of one on one work um, with the students, some of the older students help the younger students. Um, and then the writing class is also divided into a younger group and an older group. Um, and then I have a couple of students who are wanting to finish their high school um, year. They, you know, for, for a variety of reasons, they withdrew from their school, uh, you know, last year or the year before, and they're looking to complete their, their, their requirements. And so I'm helping them with that and um, apply to college. They're, I also help them with that process. And you have your first, is it just one so far, first college, uh, high school graduate college entrance uh, alum, um, so, or do you have more than one now? I have, I have more than one. I have oh, uh, three you. students that graduated from Symbiosis Learning Center. One of them uh, this year, uh, he's at uh, Mass College of Art and he's doing great. You know, I'm, I'm helping him with that, with, but he's doing great. I mean, he's being, he's really successful. Um, at this first semester and then I have a student who's at Hampshire College and then I have a student at um, University of Lowell <clears throat> so yeah and what are you finding Christine from families especially those who have come from a conventional classroom and grew um, sort of disillusioned with standardized or one-size-fits-all schooling coming to symbiosis what is that experience like what's that transformation Oh, well, you know, there's, I have such wonderful success stories, you know, um, families that are just so happy because they see their child just become a completely new person, really, you know, um, just, you know, I'm just thinking of so many students who were just really unhappy and, you know, had just so much anxiety and school phobia and, and, um, you know, coming to symbiosis and then within, within a few weeks, just, you know, initially, of course, there's that transition and, um, <clears throat> but after a few weeks, you know, the feedback that I get from families, is like, they're, they're, they, they, they see their child happy again, you know, and they, and the love of learning and curiosity and, and confidence, and, you know, self-esteem, being able to, to share their thoughts and their feelings in an environment that's, you know, very supportive. And um, <clears throat> so, yeah, the transitions are amazing. You know, I just, it, that's kind of why, why I do what I do, you know, to see, 
see that is great. Yeah. Just, I was going to ask sort of, you know, is that, has that been your biggest reward at, in this process? Is that what you envisioned um, for symbiosis in those early days? Oh yeah. Yes, absolutely. I mean, I, you know, initially I started um, just high school. That was kind of my, you know, my background is high, you know, with that age group. Um, and so initially I really uh, was, you know, um, the school was most, was just for high schoolers. And yes, and my hope was that I would, you know, that the school would um, make them feel better about themselves, you know? And then the more that, you know, after a little while I became, um, uh, people in middle school in that age group became more interested. And I think for a variety of reasons, you know, middle school, there that's the age, I think, when, when students start to um, be unhappy. <laughs> mm -hmm. And, you know, the anxiety just becomes too much for them. Um, and so, it, I mean, it's better than I than I thought it would be, you know, the transformation in these in these kids, you know, they're, I just love it. I love um, doing that for them, <laughs> you know, creating that environment. Yeah. And what about your role now as an education entrepreneur, a, a micro school founder? Um, how has that sort of role shifting been for you, for someone who had been in academia for so many years, and then now to put on your entrepreneurial hat and create a, a new program? What has that journey been like? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's really rewarding. I mean, I'm really happy to be able to do what I want, you know, and be the boss and, um, and, you know, shifting things, I, I I'm able to, um, I'm able to do things in a way that, that, that I, you know, collaborate with other teachers and families and, and, and put all of that together in a way you know, that, that I want to, and not have to, um, follow any sort of, um, time frame or any, any, any rules, <laughs> you know, I kind of can do. So that's really, you know, liberating. It's, it's an incredible feeling, um, to be able to, you know, to create something, um, from, from a vision that I wanted to, that I wanted to do. You know, and I mentioned that your um your lower costs than traditional private school options significantly lower, really in the Boston area. Um, how has the financial model worked for you? I mean, do you feel like now, a few years in, you're financially sustainable um, um, as an entrepreneur? <laughs> yeah, that's that's a great question. You know, I um, some families, you know, I'm very flexible with payment. So some families aren't really able to afford even the, the low cost. I try to keep it low, but some families aren't able to meet that uh, tuition. And so um, we do sort of an exchange where they'll provide teaching or um, they'll bring snacks to, to the school. Um, they'll, they'll, donate um, certain, you know, school supplies, things like that. Um, and then payment plan plan is very, I'm very flexible with that as well. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's hard. It's, it's hard. <laughs> it's, it's not, um, you know, my hope is that, you know, in time that I do grow a little bit more so that, you know, I can, take my kids on vacation. <laughs> you know? um, so yeah, it's still, you know, we're still in the beginning phases, I think. Yeah, it's still in the startup phase. So yeah. what have been some of your biggest challenges um, over the past, I guess, four years at this point? Um, as an entrepreneur, starting a new micro school, um, financing, maybe one of them funding, but I'm just curious of what have been some of those uh, challenges for you? Um, I think, you know, just like marketing is not my strength. And so uh, I think that's been the biggest challenge is just I, the growth, the slow growth has been good because I can, you know, it's not, I can make the changes gradually and create the school that I want to create based on the small enrollment that I have. 
Uh, but I would say marketing and enrollment, you know, reaching out to, to, you know, I try to reach out to schools. I reach out to homeschooling communities. I reach out to mental health uh, um, clinicians, trying to get, get my, get the name out. Um, and then, you know, because we're not a therapeutic school, that's an, been another challenge that sometimes, you know, it's not the right fit for everybody. You know, I'll, I'll, you know, we'll get students that um, have challenges that we just can't support, you know, behavioral challenges, learning challenges. Um, so that's been a challenge. That's been difficult for me, is, mm. you know, turning people away. Yeah. That's been really hard. Um, but does, that doesn't happen too often. So I'm curious about your predictions for the future, Christine. Um, the Washington Post recently came out with a state-by-state -state analysis showing that homeschooling nationwide is up over 50% uh, over the past six years since 2017. Here in Massachusetts, homeschooling is up 55% in that same period. Uh, there definitely seems to be more enthusiasm around schooling alternatives and homeschooling as a foundation for some of those those schooling alternatives like you're seeing with symbiosis. Do you feel like that momentum is building and growing? And I guess what is your prediction for the future uh, of this these kinds of alternatives? Yeah, I mean, definitely, you know, I feel like the timing is really um is great for 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 this kind of school. I think maybe ten years ago, I it would just not have been success, you know, as successful. I mean, I see it as successful because I see, you know, I see the the students that I have. I see the success with them, and I see the families, the feedback I get, and I think the acceptance of the model is it's much easier, you know. Um, Families who come to me, you know, it, the other challenge that I have is sort of convincing families, you know, that it's okay <laughs> that if they take their students, their children out of school, that that's been a big, um, that especially in the beginning, you know, convincing family, you know, homeschoolers get it, they they know that that they can do it. Other other families trying to convince them that you know, their student, their child is unhappy in school and they can take them out and, and homeschool them. Um, so I think, I think my prediction is that it's just going to get better. It's just going to, my, my, I think a lot more models like mine are going to, mm. are going to pop up all over, the, all over. <laughs> I think you're yeah. right. I agree. I, and I, I also think it's interesting that you launched in 2019, which was the same year that the Vela Education Fund launched and you're a Vela grant, micro grant recipient, yes. um, Vela being a national philanthropic nonprofit that since found its founding in 2019 has given out uh, grants to more than 2,500 uh, everyday entrepreneurs like you, yeah. totaling nearly $30 million in philanthropy to support these highly individualized, non-traditional, out-of-system educational models. Um, so, you know, there are more of you out there and more and more uh, coming on the scene every day. So I'm glad that you have that same optimism. And if yeah. my yeah. listeners or viewers are, you know, eager to follow in your footsteps, maybe they have that entrepreneurial itch and want to go off and create something new and different for their community. What advice do you have <laughs> for them to get started? Yeah, I would just say, go for it. You know, even if you don't know what it's going to look like, um, just start out with, the you know, slowly and, and you'll learn so much as you go along and you know, reach out to other people who, who are doing it, reach out to me, <laughs> reach out to homeschoolers. Um, there's so much information available you know, online and people who are in, really enthusiastic about doing this. Um, so I would say, you know, cause that is feedback that I get from families or from other people like, oh, I've always wanted to do this, but I didn't know how or what to do, <laughs> you know, and I say I didn't either, you know, I didn't really know what what to do either, but I just, you know, had the, the, the I guess the real, you know, desire to, to create, you know, something for, for kids who felt 
good about themselves and happy. And so, yeah, I would just say, go for it. <laughs> do it. I love it. Yeah. I mean, I think it's so true that there are so many young people who could benefit from more models like symbiosis, um, whether it's they're unhappy in a conventional school or just looking for a different way to approach teaching and learning. Uh, and so, you know, I think that that's great and hopefully more people will follow in your footsteps. So thank you for offering, uh, folks to reach out to you. How can my listeners and viewers learn more about symbiosis and connect with you? Yeah. So I have my website is, you know, symbiosislearningcenter.com and, um, my, I have a Facebook page uh, and Instagram symbiosis learning center, um, and my, my contact information is on the website info at symbiosislearningcenter.com or Christine at symbiosislearningcenter.com. I mean, I love to talk about the school and, and share my experience and, um, and, and I work with a great team who's also really happy to, to share their experience. So. Just wonderful. Well, best wishes to you on the future growth and impact of Symbiosis Learning Center. And Christine Fringer, thank you so much for being on the Liberated Podcast. Carrie, thank you so much. It's been a real joy. <laughs>